what if we served? Serving is mentioned all throughout scripture, but I think that causes us to just view it as a command. See, serving is so much more than that. It's a privilege. We have the luxury of loving on and helping others. Being served is amazing, but to be able to give someone else that feeling is even greater. Whether it is serving our community through our open heart food pantry, or serving your neighborhood through prayer and hospitality, or even serving your church family by being involved in one of the ministries here at HCC, serving will transform your life and give you a divine joy. We experience joy from the things God gives us. His word nourishes us, his bride encourages us, his body and blood even rejuvenates us. But if we simply take it all in without letting it pass through us as we serve others, it's all futile. We get to be the vessel in which God shows his love to the world. So what if we all served? Well, Christ's hands and feet would actively be changing this hurtful, painful world into his glorious kingdom. Between that song and uh, that video, I don't need to preach. We're not done. Let's all go home. Uh, to all my Haitian uh, brothers and sisters out here, bonjour, frères et sœurs, que la grâce de Dieu soit avec nous tous. All right, I knew we had two of some out here. Uh, may the gra- good morning, my brothers and sisters. May the grace and peace of God be with you. Uh, it's great to be here with you. In the name of your sister church there in Corai, I want you to know that they are praying for you, even in the midst of their situation. They're praying for you. And uh, your generosity, awesome. Wow, that's just tremendous. Some of the things that have happened since Hurricane Matthew there in Haiti about a month ago, uh, it just totally destroyed catastrophic destruction the last third of the peninsula just jeremy on the north coast corais on the north coast of the peninsula it's just east of jeremy from jeremy's west total devastation 100 percent crop loss now when 80 or 95 85 percent of the people the way they earn their money is through uh farming that's a total disaster. Their income's gone. 80% of their animals are gone. Now, animals are their savings program. They don't have banks. They don't put money in a bank. They put it in their house, and they put it in animals. And so when I I buy a little goat, when he grows up, uh, if I need to pay for my kid's schooling, I need to have a medical bill, I have something else I want to do, I sell a goat or two, or a pig, or whatever, and uh, I'm able to carry on my business. That's my savings plan. That's gone. If they had a house that had tin roof on it, uh, that most likely is gone. Uh, Just incredible devastation uh, down there. Two weeks after the hurricane, I happened to be down there. I'm leaving on Friday morning to come back to the States. I'd gone down there, gone down the coastline, Uh, and just saw this tremendous devastation, Uh, just breaks your heart. You don't know where to start. How do we help these people? Uh, It's just so, so sad. Uh, I'm coming home, going to come home early uh, Friday morning, and it starts raining Thursday afternoon. Rains all night, torrential rain. We have what I call a 100-year th- flood, just tremendous floods. I lived there for 30-some years, hadn't seen a flood like that uh, in my whole time there. Maybe once something came close. Tre- just a devastation upon devastation. In Korai, it was a little east of Jeremy, uh, and thankfully not quite as hard hit. However... Let's take a look at what that means. Eight people died as a result of the hurricane in the community. They lost 50% of their animals, a huge hit. They lost 100% of the crops. Uh, They lost a tremendous amount of trees. 
they, the church uh, body, 35 homes were lost. That check is going to do a lot of good, Pastor. 20 percent, at least, of the homes in the area were destroyed. Uh, the pastor was asked, "What's the greatest need they have right now?" They said, "Food. We're hungry. Starvation is uh, potential. Malnourishment is rampant already. So the food that you're putting together, the food that we already have available and are getting out to Korai area, uh, is going to have and is having a great impact on them." The thing that is, you might think, well, we're packing this food and it's not going to get there till who knows when and et cetera, et cetera. Well, let me tell you, this hunger need in Haiti in the south there is going to be months and maybe even years in duration. Tremendous, tremendous need. So thank you guys for what you're doing. Uh, and pray, pray for your church. Pray for your pastor that he knows how to encourage his people. The neat thing, when I went and saw these different pastors down the road where I went, uh, they were like, oh, God's in control, God's making it happen, God's providing, uh, we're waiting on the Lord. I mean, such faith, such active uh, trust in God, and it touched me. And uh, you know, pray for your people there. These are your brothers and sisters. Uh, through the blood of Christ that has drawn us together. So keep praying and keep giving and uh, keep ministering. Ministry starts here and moves out there. And that's why it's exciting. What if everyone prayed? We talked about that last week, right? Did you pray this week? Have you been a praying church this week? Have you as an individual been praying and bringing to God the needs of your heart, the needs of your family, the needs of your church, the needs of your community, the needs of this world? What if everyone prayed? You know, you did pray. $22,000 worth of prayer. God is hearing your prayers. And he will continue to hear his prayer. He works through your prayers. So what if everyone prayed Tremendous things are going to happen here at Hollywood. What if everyone serves? What if everyone served here? The impact would be amazing on this church. The men's ministry, the women's ministry, the children's ministry, youth, missions impact, food pantry, nursing home ministry, big brother, big sister ministry, prayer ministry, community Outreaches like the Thanksgiving meal, volunteering for uh, the Christ Hollywood Christian School Athletics Program, sponsoring kids in Haiti and Burkina Faso, uh, the Meals of Hope event coming up, packing. Wow, the ministries of this church, and there's booths all over here that, where you can sign up and be a part of them. If everyone served, wow, what a difference it would make in our schools, our families, our churches, our community. Serve means, usually means to us, I'm serving as a servant. We put serve and servant together, don't we? Let me tell you, uh, that's the one type of person we don't want to be. I don't want to be a servant. Do you want to be a servant? No. But that's who Christ wants us to be. He wants us to be a servant. But what do we want to be? We want to be the master. I don't want to be the servant. We want to be the one in charge, not the one caring for those in charge. We want to be the one who can order others around rather than taking orders <coughs> from those who are around. We want to be the one that's served, not the one that serves. You know, even the disciples understood what was the desirable position. They had it. They understood this. I mean, who was going to be the greatest among them? Who was going to be the ones in authority? They were already arguing over that. They got this right, this master-servant thing. They knew which one they wanted. They wanted to be the master. It was so much more desirable than to be the servant. None of us wants to be a servant. 
It's just not in our nature. That's not who we are as fallen creatures. We desire, desire that master role, not the servant role. We want to lead, not follow. To be admired rather than despised or looked down on. We want to be seen as somebody, not as nobody, right? Master or servant. It's an easy choice for us until Christ comes along. You know, Christ just has a way of messing things up. You ever notice that? I mean, we think we got things going just nicely, and then Christ comes in and says, no, that's not the way we do it. That's not the way I want you to do it. He turns uh, upside down our life on so many levels. And when it comes to master or servant, you know, he just doesn't understand the way the world works. I mean, everyone wants to be great, and the way you get there is dog-eat-dog, uh, you know, battle for position, wealth, and authority. Who cares what happens to those around me? That's the way it happens, Christ. But Christ says, no, sorry. You want to be great? You have to be a servant. You want to be great? You have to be the least. Whoa. To be great, you have to serve others. Are you crazy? Lord, no way. Come on. You're really messing up my life here. Because I don't want to serve. Now that was simply echoing what's running around in your head. You don't want to serve either. Not normally. Not until Christ grabs us. Not until we're able to understand what it means to be a true servant uh, nobody wants to be a servant. Why? Because a true servant is one who is at the beck and call of someone else, someone who employs them often for domestic duties. We think a servant and a servant in the home. <coughs> How many of us want a servant in the house? Man, I do. I know you do. Any woman here would love to have someone come in and clean the house, do the laundry, take care of the kids, do some yard work, right? Huh? Raise your hand if you'd like to have one of them at your house. And all the rest of you are liars, okay? So I already got that. <coughs> uh, we all want to be the master, not the servant. We want to be the one giving the orders, not the one taking them. The one that is in authority and not under authority. But Christ, he asks us to be the servant. Being the servant means that I do whatever my employer asks me to do. It's usually not the fun stuff either. Servants don't get the fun stuff. They get the messy stuff. <clears throat> they get the stuff that's difficult, that's dirty, hard, tough, disgusting, even humiliating, often exhausting with hard hours, long hours. I spent most of my life with servants in our home. I'm not rich. We were just missionaries in a third world country. And if you want to do any ministry in a third world country, you, number one, it's expected culturally, that you're going to have folks work with you. Secondly, it is demanded that you have folks work with you. Otherwise, you simply don't have the time to do the ministry that God's called you to do. Why? Uh, cleaning the house. Uh, open homes, dust all over all the time. Uh, bugs, etc. I mean, it was just always cleaning, always needing to be cleaned uh, just to keep keep it down. And my wife had problems with allergies, so we had to keep it cleaner than most. And uh, that was even tougher on our staff. Um, you know, cooking, a meal, everything's done from scratch. Uh, I had the healthiest lifestyle in, uh, around. You know, everything's done organically. Uh, there's no GMO in Haiti. We talk about lean meat. We have it. It's so lean, you add fat to it to get, you know, so it's not hockey puck, you know. Uh, our meat, would come in the door still quivering. You know, when you cut it, it moved. You know, it was that fresh, right out of the butcher. And Debbie would get 40 pounds of quivering beef, you know, and had to... So having a servant was a necessary thing for us. Uh, we needed them, you know, but it didn't change. Uh, you know, they cared for everything. When there was a mess, they cleaned it up. Most dirty jobs ended up their responsibility. The thing that was different for us than many others that had servants is that our staff were family. 
We considered each other's family. We loved each other. We cared for each other. Uh, they knew we were there for them when they needed us, and we were there for them as they needed it. Uh, but that didn't change the relationship. It was still, we were still the employer, employee, uh, and uh, employer, and they were still the servant. We needed them to do something. They did it, no question. Didn't mean they liked it, but they did it. They were the epitome of what a good and faithful servant was all about. They were there anytime we needed to do whatever we needed. They were there for us, and uh, we're, it was an amazing, uh, amazing thing. They were a great, great people, great staff. We couldn't have had the ministry we had in Haiti without them. We saw them as an integral part of our ministry. Uh, and so having a, a servant in that capacity in Haiti is a part of what we needed. Christ needs us. He wants us, number one, to serve him, number two, to serve those around us in his name. And so love and serve go hand in hand. You can't love God and not serve him. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't love God and not serve him. You can't love your neighbor and not serve him. There we go. I lost my page. <laughs> uh, so our first point, I was looking for my first point here. Uh, who do we serve? Well, we serve the Lord. In Psalms 2, it says, serve the Lord with reverential awe and rejoice with trembling. Psalm 100, serve the Lord with gladness. Uh, Romans 14, <coughs> for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever serves Christ in this way is acceptable to God and approved by man. John 12, the one who loves his life will lose it. The one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, the Lord, <coughs> he must follow me. Where I am, there my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, the Lord, the Father, will honor him. God asks us to serve him. He wants us to be a part of those who care, who serve him. <coughs> he goes on and he says, uh, uh, he was talking, Christ was talking uh, to someone and the, the guy says, well, he asked the guy, what's the great commandment? And the guy answered in Luke uh, <coughs> 27, he says, uh, 10, 27, he says, the love, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Christ says, you answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. These are things uh, that God is asking us to do. You see, love and service go hand in hand. You can't love someone and not serve them. If you're married, you have a spouse, you know that you, if you love that spouse, what are you trying to do? You're trying to find ways to meet their needs. You're trying to help them, to care for them, to, to enable them to have joy and peace and comfort in their life. It means you're reaching out and you're caring, you're serving your spouse because you love them. Love and serve go hand in hand. You can't love God and not serve him. You can't say, I love God, I love you, Jesus. Oh, sing, stand up here and sing beautiful songs of praise and not serve. Because love and serve go hand in hand. And God asks us, who do we serve? We serve the Lord. We're to love God. We're to serve our neighbor, anyone who is in need. Neighbor's not just the one leaving next door, but whoever is in need is your neighbor. Uh, God wants you to reach out to those who are hurting, starting at your home and reaching all the way to the ends of the earth. He wants you to be a part of ministering into their life, ministering as the hands and feet of Jesus. A $22,000 check is ministering in the name of Jesus, being the hands and feet of going out there and ministering and, and caring for those who are in need. An amazing thing. It's awesome. Serving God. Serve our neighbor. 
and then serve the body of Christ. God wants us as members of the body to minister one to another. He has said that we are members one and another. There's no member that's more important than the other. We all have a role within the body. And so who do we serve? We serve the Lord. We serve our neighbor. And we serve the body as we are all members one to another. Well, why do we serve? You know, we're commanded to have the same attitude that was in Christ, we're to have that same attitude in us. If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. It's an important uh, aspect of uh, of what it means in the realm of serving. Philippians 2, 1 to 9, it says, Have this attitude in yourself that it was in Christ Jesus who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave or a servant, taking on the likeness of men. When he had come forth as a man in his, in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to his Father in heaven to the point of death, even to death on a cross. And for this reason... God highly exalted him and gave him in the name that is above every name. See, Christ came as a servant of God the Father. And then not only as a servant of God the Father, a servant of man. I mean, he went even further down the line. God, Christ left heaven where angels served him and came down to serve man. He became one. And then he humbled himself even further. Rather than being a great man in the eyes of the world, he became the least a servant, one who served others, one who washed the feet of those who had traveled and who had had dirty feet. Christ is the ultimate servant. Because Christ left heaven, he came to earth, he suffered all the sufferings of man, rather than being served in heaven by angels. And he came to serve man, to prepare a way for us to be able then uh, to have salvation, preparing a way of salvation and providing an example of what a true servant is all about. How many of you have been obedient even to death? Few of us have had that need. Few of us have taken that kind of a step. But you know, if you're serving Christ, no matter what capacity, no matter who you are, uh, God, if you're obedient to him, he will lead you, he will guide you. And it might be that you give, even give your life as a servant of Christ. God, it was the ultimate servant for us. Another reason why we serve, not just to have that same, be like Christ, to imitate him, uh, to serve out of love for who he is and what he has done for us, providing salvation, but we also serve to imitate Christ. He left heaven. He came down. He provided us that that, uh, great opportunity to understand what a true servant is, Uh, obedient to the Father, obedient to to whatever the Father asked him to do, he did, even to the death on the cross. And so our job, our responsibility as servants of Christ is to be obedient to him no matter what he asks us to do. It is very possible there are people sitting here today, right now, God has asked you to be a missionary somewhere in this world and you have refused. You have said, oh, not me. I hate bugs. You know, I don't like to be uncomfortable. Lord, not me. Are you a true servant of Christ, obedient to Christ, to whatever he asks of you? Maybe it's to serve in many of the different opportunities around here, and you've refused thus far. Oh, I don't have the time. I hate this. I don't like that. Uh... You know, I've got so much going on. Obedient to Christ. Imitate him. 
imitating Christ. As Christ was obedient to the Father, we are to be obedient to Christ as he asks us to serve and to care for those around us. And then, uh, not only imitating Christ, but then to bring in that care for others. God asks us to care for those around us. He says, love God and love your, what? Your neighbor. Love those who care, who, uh, are around you. Care for those who are around you. Serve those who are around you. And there are so many opportunities for you to do that through the church here and in many other opportunities that you have as well. So, uh, you know, if, if uh, uh, we talk about serving others, you know, in James it saw, says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can his faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you don't give them what the body needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith, if it doesn't have works, is dead by itself. And so Christ tells us we can imitate him, but we imitate him through the kind of, uh, um, of uh, by, by what we do. You know, that check that you guys gave, the money that you've provided, that's a part of those good works that God has for you. Um, God wants you to be involved in what he's doing in people's lives, and he wants to use you. Jesus said, uh, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles dominate them, the men of high position exercise power over them. It must not be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Uh, Matthew 23, do not be called masters either because you have one master, the Messiah, the greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So we serve out a love for the Lord to imitate Christ and to care for those around us because we understand that if we're going to be great in the kingdom, we're to serve. If we're going to love Christ, we're going to serve. If we're going to imitate Christ, we're going to serve. If we're going to uh, care for those around us, we're going to serve. These are the reasons why we serve. Then what kind of service do we offer? Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his creation, offered in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time, so that we should walk in them. Do you know that God already planned on you serving? Have you, do you realize that? That God, before you even came to know him, prepared ahead of time good works, service that you will do for him. Now, it's interesting he says that you should do for him. It's not that he says you will do, actually. And he doesn't say, well, if you want to. He says, I have these things. I want you to do them. And I'm trusting that you're going to make that choice to do that. You should walk in them. These are things that I have prepared for you to do. Are you going to make that choice? You should walk in them. You should do them. You should be a part of them. God already has ways planned for you, for your gifts, your talents, your resources that he has given to you, that you can come and minister in ways into people's lives that not even you understood could happen before. But God knew it. God's ready. He's ready for you to step out in faith and serve and to do the things that he has already prepared for you. What an awesome, what an awesome thing it is. So we have good works. We have hospitality. God has told us several places to provide hospitality, showing love to, to those uh, that, are in, that are needed, um, serving the saints. Uh, it, is, it is a great need. For us to show hospitality. You know, hospitality in American society is one of the great characteristics that we have lost. We don't know how to provide hospitality in this country. Our hospitality is, well, here's a gift card to a restaurant and a hotel room. 
Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I like a good hotel room and a restaurant card. You know, I mean, that's not a problem. But we've lost the, 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 the hospitality in those cultures in those days. And the same thing in Haiti. Uh, you don't have hotels. You didn't have, if you were traveling, you had to stay with somebody. And you, had, you came and, and uh, family and friends, you just showed up and all one day and poof, there you were there. And I, hey, hey, George, how you doing? I'm here for a couple days. Uh, I think you could put me up. Uh, and bam, they did it. They made it happen. Hospitality is one way that we can reach out to those around us. Do you know one of the greatest ways you can minister into people's lives is hospitality, having them over to your house? just engaging with them, just being a part of them. That is, we've lost that in our culture. Uh, and it is something we need to bring back and enjoy that hospitality together, showing love to everyone. Another aspect of uh, what kind of service can we offer, uh, Hebrews 6, 9 to 11, it says, even though we are speaking this way, dear friends, in your case, we're confident of the better things connected with salvation. Verse 10. For God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you shared, you showed in his name when you served the saints and you continue to do so. You continue to serve them. Serving the saints. Being a part of ministering into the body of Christ. How do we, uh, what kind of service do we offer? Good works, hospitality, and serving each other in the body ministering one to another there are people right around you that need your ministry they need your touch they need your word of encouragement they need your challenge they need your uh, arm to come around them and there are so many opportunities to do that in this church so many ministries that you could be a part of to come and embrace your body here at this church and i challenge you to do and to be a part of that well how do we serve you know, Ephesians 6, 6, it says, Don't work only while being watched in order to please men, but as slaves of Christ, do God's will from your heart. Serve with a good attitude as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good each one does, slave or free, he will receive this back from the Lord. We serve not for the praise of man, but for the praise of God. We serve so that Others will be ministered to, not us being glorified. We serve with an attitude of uh, pleasing God rather than pleasing man. Not worrying about if anybody knows. We serve by using the gifts, the talents, and resources that God has given us. God has given you so much. You know, we all have different gifts and talents. Put them to use in the best way possible. You know, some people, some of you are upfront people. You like to be up in front of folks. You feel comfortable with that. You know, Pastor Brian, the, music, the worship team, others, they're used to that. That's where God has them. They're, they're, they're very comfortable in that, and God's using them. And you're like, oh, not me, man. Don't get me up there. Who's running the sound booth right now? Do you know their name? I bet you 90% of you couldn't tell me who's running the sound booth. You don't know. That's okay. That's, they're, they're doing a great ministry. Enabling you to hear well and to be able to understand and see and experience what God has for you this morning. And yet nobody knows who they are. But they're ministering. They're using the gifts and talents and resources that God's given them to minister to the body and to the ends of the earth in many different ways through their service. You know, some people work great with kids. Others might kill them. You know, that's me. You know, don't ask me to work the kids. I, oh boy, they'll be in, we'll all be in trouble. Uh, you know, find a ministry that fits you and uh, serve with joy in it. You know, some of you do love kids. Man, there's all so many ministries. There's others that, no, don't, don't ask me to, to minister to a kid, but man, give me a hammer. You know, I'll do something. Whatever it is, God wants to use you. But you know, serving is going to cost. Serving is going to cost you. It's going to cost time. It's going to cost energy. 
it's going to cost resources, it's often is drudgery. Serving is not fun. If you're coming for fun, go to the amusement park. Service is not fun. But service is rewarding. Service is fulfilling. Service brings joy. Service brings contentment. Service brings an understanding that I am doing the work that God has prepared ahead of time for me. Serve with a cheerful heart. Serve with a great attitude. Serve humbly. Nobody needs to know you're serving. God knows. He's taken note. Put others first. Serve with love. Serve sacrificially. Serve joyfully. Serve God. Serve my neighbor. When do we serve? 24-7. You know why? Because that's when that's how God's serving you. Christ cares for you 24/7. Aren't you glad that Christ doesn't do it just 12? You know, 12 5, you know, 12 hours a day, 5 days a week. The rest of the time you're on your own, dude, you know. Hey, I'm taking a break. God cares for you 24/7. God loves you 24/7. God Uh, wants to be engaged in your life 24-7. God is looking forward to not only this life, but eternity with you. And so what should your service be to Him? 24-7. Ready at any time. In season, out of season. Whether I'm ready or not, I'm ready to serve no matter what the conditions are, Lord. I'm ready. I'm yours. I'm ready to do it. Our love of God needs to be a, should be a constant presence in our life. And if that's, if our love of God's in our life constantly and flowing through us, then serving, desire to serve, is, should be flowing through us constantly, constantly looking for ways to serve those around us uh, in, uh, uh, in Jesus' name. We're to look for those opportunities. In what areas of ministry, uh, excuse me, um, in what areas of ministry of the church will you serve this week? What plans have you made? Often opportunities to serve the body or those around you come at inopportune times, don't they? You know, it's never convenient to serve. You ever see that? Someone asks you, hey, I need, would you be able to do this and help me with that? Oh, man, you know, oh, but let me check my date book. Uh, well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I really can't. I was going to go to Starbucks, you know. Just, I mean, how am I going to get my latte if I serve you here? It's, that's not going to happen. Uh, you know, we make fun of that, but that's reality, isn't it? So often, opportunities come up for us to serve one another, and yet we find excuses. We find ways to get out of it. We find... Uh, ways for us to uh, be uh, um, get to, to not have to do that because it's inconvenient. It's not going to be fun. It's going to mean that I'm going to have to cancel this thing or that thing. Uh, I'm going to have to take some time from this over here. That was I was really looking forward to going out on the boat this weekend, and maybe if I did that, it's just not going to happen. Uh, I'm here, but I really wanted to be on my motorcycle this morning, taking a nice ride. Well, I chose to be here. Now, I use that, that's kind of more of a joke than anything, guys, but, uh, uh, you know, I often have a choice of a Saturday morning. Am I going to serve at my church? Am I going to serve... With at my house, serve my wife, some things she needs, to, she would like me to get done, or am I going to be self and say, hey, the guy's are going for a ride and I'm, I want to go out with him? Uh, choices. We have to make choices all the time. When do we serve? Remember, it's never convenient. It's never easy. It's never uh, 
going to be uh, the nice and fun thing to do, but it's the right thing to do so often. Are you ready to serve? So where do we serve? Acts 1.8, uh, to me, is, uh, in a nutshell, the whole Bible. You will be my witnesses from your home to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses from your home to the end of the earth. You're going to serve me. You're going to imitate me. You're going to show the world me from where you live to the ends of the earth. You're going to be my mouthpiece. You're going to be my hands, my feet. You're going to be my witness telling those, showing those who I am, what I am. And you're going to do it through the love that you show by the service that you give. Love without service is empty. Remember that. Love without service is empty. I can love my wife, I can say I love my wife, but if I never do something for her, if I'm never engaged with her, if I'm never helping her uh, when she needs help, or even she didn't know she needed some help, I'm there to help uh, clean up the dishes or whatever, then I'm not showing love. And so be my witnesses. Be, you start serving your family in your home, and then you move from there to your neighbors, literal neighbors. You move to your church, to your community, and to the ends of the earth. Where do we serve? Everywhere. The best place to start other than your home is your church because you have so many opportunities, so many amazing ways to reach out and touch In Jesus' name, so many that are hurting and that need your love. They need your compassion. They need your service. Just think of what the ministries of the church here at Hollywood would be, would look like if everyone served. How many people we probably have here, Pastor? Uh, This morning, probably. Normally, we'd have around 450 in the auditorium or so. Just think of 450 of you were serving every week in the church here. What an amazing difference that would make. The men's ministry would have lots of men discipling others and men who would be being discipled and growing in their faith. Men would be drawn to come as they saw real men acting in godly ways. And that would draw others in. The women's ministry would be overflowing as other women would see the love and acceptance and care they received from godly women around them. Women would be lifting them up and ministering to them and their families in many practical and spiritual ways. Children's ministry would have lots of godly examples of men, women, and youth for the children to follow, and they would have a safe place to come and feel loved and cared for. Youth would see adults who love them and love the Lord caring for them and are there for them when needed. The missions team would be challenged to reach out from here to the ends of the earth, flush with people ready to share the gospel no matter where it is, and that would have the resources needed to reach out and care for people spiritually and practically around the block and around the world. $22,000 already for Haiti. An amazing thing, and yet there's so much more to do. If we all served, giving our talents, gifts, resources, po- pulling them together, <coughs> the food pantry wouldn't know where to put the food available to them. Those who would come there in need would find many that were willing to love them as they are, care for them, help them look to the future spiritually and practically as mentors, helping raise them up in dignity. The nursing home ministry would need to branch out to other homes as there would be so many willing to come and spend a little time with someone who has little or no family to come around and care and encourage them, to be someone they can talk to, love on, and share the gospel with them. (coughs) The big brother, big sister A mentoring program for Hollywood Christian students would see the students excelling due to the mentoring of so many from this church. The prayer ministry would grow. I put here, I didn't know exactly how you do it, Pastor, but uh, I guess this is old time. (coughs) Prayer ministry would need a bigger room as many come together to lift the needs of the church and community to the Lord. You know, the email list would grow. People would respond at home, whatever. Uh, The different outreaches of the church would have 
see so many people helping that the help would no longer be needed. The Thanksgiving meal uh, coming up. Uh, volunteers for Hollywood Christian School Athletics. The Meals of Hope event uh, coming up next week. Uh, I don't know if you still need people or not, but uh, if we need people, where are you? What if we served? We'd get some meals done. Uh, <clears throat> every family supporting a child or two from Haiti or in Burkina Faso so that all those kids who needed schooling, and in Haiti right now, that's just a huge need with the situation. Those kids who needed schooling and help would find it. What a difference we would make in our families, our church, our schools, and our youth and our communities if everyone serves. Dear friends, I urge you as strangers and temporary residents of this earth to abstain from fleshly desires that were against you, but conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that in a case where they speak against you as those who do what is evil, they will, by observing your good works, glorify God on the day of visitation. You know, God wants your service. He is looking for your service. And as you serve, your testimony to those around you who do not know God is an amazing thing. They look at you and they will glorify God even though they don't really know Him because of what you're doing. Your testimony is an important thing and service to Him is what it's all about. How do you want to be welcomed into heaven? We're all going, we're all going to die. And if you're born again and love the Lord as your, uh, love the Lord as your Lord and Savior and have accepted Him as your, as your uh, uh, Savior, you're going to heaven. How do you want to be accepted into heaven? Is it, whew, glad you just made it. Or is it going to be, whew, you smell a little like smoke, <laughs> you know? Oh, she's here. Next. No big deal. She didn't make much of an impact. He wasn't very impactful. Or do you want to have your master come running and wrap his arms around you and say, Oh, welcome. Man, you are such a good and faithful servant. Man, it's so great to have you here with me now. Welcome, good and faithful servant. That's what I want. That's what I'm hoping to hear. That's what I'm striving for. How about you? Is that what you want? You want to smell like smoke or you want to get in there and wow, how Jesus is like, yes, man, you were so faithful on the earth. You look at what you accomplished. Look at how many people are here because of you. Look what you did. Look how you ministered and served in my name. And wow, it's so good to have you here with me now. Welcome, good, faithful servant. You can't be a true Christian, a follower of Christ, a born-again believer, and not serve. I don't know if you caught that by now. Christ has given us the command to serve. So the question is, are you a servant to the Lord and others? Are you serving your master and Lord? Are you doing his bidding to love him and your neighbor as yourself? To serve him and serve your neighbor? I want you to stand, for everyone to stand right now. And I'm going to give a series of uh, phrases, and at the end, the answer is serve. And I want you to, if you believe it, if you're going to engage in it, if you're going to do it, if you're going to do what Christ wants you to do, I want you to use, shout out that word, serve. So, if a follower of Christ, you are to? It's getting, you got, boy, you got a lot of work out of you, Pastor. Boy, it's tough. 
If you're a part of the body of Christ, you are too. If you are an imitator of Christ, you are too. If you are a disciple of Christ, you are too. If you desire to be like Christ, you are too. If you love Christ, you are too. If you desire to be great, you are too. If you desire to be great in the kingdom, you are too. If you desire to be great in God's eyes, you are too. If you desire God's blessing, you are too. If you want to accomplish great things for God, you are too. If you want to lead in the body of Christ, you are too. If you desire to be godly, you are too. If to have oneness in the body, you are too. For an authentic witness of Christ, you are too. It's getting lower. (coughs) If you want to do good works, you are too. If you desire to help others, you are too. (coughs) If you want to be like Christ, you are too. What if everybody in the body of Christ served? What if you serve? And you, and you, and you. Serve God. Serve your neighbors. May God bless you.